Hi everyone, if you're a Sony E-mount user, you know that lately we've been spoiled for choice as far as standard zooms go. In front of me are the three main lenses available in the standard zoom range, in, in this case 24 to 70, 24 105, and 28 to 75. Any one of these lenses would be great, and any one of these lenses, if you buy it, will be the lens that you probably keep on your camera all the time. But which one of these lenses is best for you? Each one of them offers a certain benefit that none of the others do, and each one of them also has a bit of a downside. So let's talk about it. So I own two of the lenses used in this video, the 24-105 uh, to 105 and the Tamron, and if you add up the price of both of these lenses, they still come in cheaper than the price of the 24-70G Master, which is currently on loan from Sony Pro Support. So thank you to them for that. I've been using the 24-105 for about uh, eight, nine months uh, since it came out, and I absolutely love that lens. I'll throw in a couple of image samples from shots that I've taken in the past with that. The Tamron, we got lucky and were able to find a copy online that wasn't backordered, and that's going to be my wife's primary lens. Well, Sony threw out all pretense of a light system when they made the 24 to 70. At 960 grams, it's as heavy as any DSLR lens and really is mismatched when compared to the uh, mirrorless bodies. Um, the 24 to 105, on the other hand, comes in at 200 grams lighter, 760. Still pretty heavy, but it is very manageable, especially for long hikes. Now, one of the design goals on the Tamron was to come in with a lighter lens. At 626 grams, it is indeed much lighter and just makes it that much easier to carry for a long day of shooting. As far as the handling and features, the 24-70 does feel the best. You know, the weight does make it feel like a really solid lens, which it is. It has a uh, zoom lock if you're, you know, doing some sort of active shooting. You don't want the zoom to creep at all. Your autofocus, manual focus button, and a focus hold button. These are pretty standard features. Uh, it does feel pretty good in the hand. Now, the 24-105, to interestingly, it, uh, it also has the manual focus, autofocus button, and a focus hold. But it has, very importantly, optical image stabilization, which as you get into the longer end of the zoom range is quite Quite important and does help you bring down some of those shutter speeds that you would otherwise lose with the f4 aperture now the the tamron also feels really good in the hand there's nothing that says cheap about this lens it does feel like a quality lens and as you can see it says designed in japan and like the 24 105 uh, these lenses were made in china not japan the 24 to 70 on the other hand was made in japan but still that really doesn't necessarily mean that these lenses are not of high quality both of them are in fact one feature that that I noticed right off the bat with the Tamron is the dot for aligning the lens for mounting is not elevated. It's just painted on and that might not seem like a big deal but in situations where you can't take your eyes off the subject or it's dark and you, it really makes changing lenses a bit of a hassle. So that's something to think about. Huge thanks to my friend Nadia Kalmet for helping out with this video. She's a multi, multi-talented Peruvian lecturer, actress, choreographer, dancer, and model and you can check out all her links in the description below. I had the 24 to 105 since December of 2017 and I've really been enjoying using this lens because of its versatility and because it's just so competent for almost any shooting situation you can imagine. So, you know, I went out and shot some environmental portraiture in Los Angeles, took some landscapes in Death Valley, uh, did some portrait shoots closer to home, and you can see that even stop down at f8 when you're zooming in, your background bokeh is looking pretty nice, you know, not overly busy. And even the foreground bokeh, I put some flowers here, even the foreground bokeh is looking pretty smooth. And the thing about a lens like this, it's just so good at everything that I'm confident taking it on trips like here to Ethiopia and you know, also places like Peru. I can just throw this lens on and know that I'm not going to miss the shot. And the sharpness is also outstanding. And really, that's what you want from any one of these three lenses. You want a lens that can pretty much do it all. So let's take a look at some of the others. Take a look at some of the shots taken with the Tamron. Now remember, the Tamron is coming in $500 cheaper than the Sony 24 to 105. So it's $800 compared to $1,300. And in my opinion, you're getting a pretty good performance bang for your buck with the Tamron. Your top concern is gonna be sharpness. Are you really getting that kind of performance with the discounted lens? And I mean, if we zoom in here at f4, you can see it's scarily sharp. It's too sharp for a lot of portrait work. I mean, so it's as sharp as you're going to need for portrait work, basically. And you can see even at f4, we're getting a really nice, smooth bokeh. And we can zoom in here and get a close-up. And this is at 5.6, but just amazing, amazing detail with the Tamron. 
you know, one of the benefits of the 2.8 aperture as opposed to the f4 of the 24 to 105 is that you're able to go to low light situations and use a faster shutter speed here 1 60th. Uh, so you can freeze some of the action with a reasonable ISO and that's something that you can't do with the f4. So you are a little bit more flexible with the Tamron than you are with the Sony as far as low light shooting. So here's some of the shots that I took in the daytime with this lens. You know, again, excellent sharpness if we we're going to zoom in. Uh, that's a little bit scary. We'll zoom out a little bit. But, you know, yeah, we're getting a little bit of onion ring bokeh. And that's something that the G Master claims to eliminate. But, you know, at, the pri at this price point, I don't think we can really complain that much. Uh, again, if we were to zoom in on some of the, the bokeh on this lens, you can see it's, it's pretty smooth. It, you, this is always a good test for the bokeh of a lens, is see how it incorporates vertical kind of posts and fences and things like that. That's where you're going to see rough bokeh, that and sort of leafy surfaces. And here it's really smoothing them out. You're not getting that sort of busyness. You know, here you're seeing boundaries that sort of blur nicely together. You know, nice round little bokeh balls. It's, I mean, yeah, it's not on par with a really good prime lens, but considering it's a budget zoom, I think the bokeh is really excellent. I think we're moving into a new era as far as performance and price in lenses. A couple more examples of shots taken with the lens. Again, nice round circular bokeh, good sharpness on the face of this little critter. <laughs> what a cute little guy. Um, and here's an example of shooting into direct light with the Tamron. You can see you are getting a little bit of veiling, so not the best uh, flare control in this lens, but still an excellent bang for your buck. Okay, let's take a look at some shots taken with the G Master 24 to 70. Now, just a reminder, this is a $2,200 lens. That's nearly three times the price of the Tamron and almost double the price of the 24 to 105. So it better have performance that's up to par. And I have to tell you, it pretty much does. Now, as I mentioned, the size of this lens is a little bit scary. And after I had the lens as a loner in the first shoot that I was to go on, I actually opted for the Tamron because I knew that I was gonna be standing up on my feet all day long with the camera around my neck. And I didn't wanna have that huge bulky lens. But then I took it on a night shoot and I was just blown away by how well the lens performs in low light, especially in terms of how quickly it grabs focus in low light. It is far superior to either, to both the Tamron and the 24-105. So it, you're certainly getting something for your money in terms of focus performance. And of course, sharpness, bokeh, everything on this lens is just one step better than either of the other two lenses. I'm gonna zoom in on some detail here. Once again, low light performance, you're able to get a faster shutter speed with a reasonable ISO with this lens, and you're able to freeze some of the action. And let's take a look now at some video shot with these three lenses and see how the focus performance and video performance compares. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. Hora. Así a mí. Ahora para acá. Puripaya. Look at video performance on the three lenses. There's yeah. really not a whole lot you can tell from, you know, sort of these sample images. But it is important to note that the G Master is the fastest at focusing. It does better at focus tracking. Eye focus works a little bit better on that than either of the other two lenses. 24 to 105 is just a little bit behind, and then the Tamron 28 to 75, very acceptable, but still not quite as good as the other two lenses.
So there you go, folks. Now we've heard a little bit about each of these lenses. We've seen image samples from all three. The decision about which to buy really comes down to your budget. If you have an unlimited budget, and of course you don't worry about carrying all this extra weight and size around, then of course, by all means, the, the Sony GM is definitely the best lens. The image quality is just a little bit better. The focusing is noticeably better. And you know, it, it is just a dream to use. This one focuses great in low light. It just snaps on instantly. The eye focus works without any flaws all the time. Uh, this definitely is the best lens. However, these two guys at much lower cost are very, very close. The 24 to 105, this is my personal lens. I've been using it for the past about uh, eight months and I love it. The F4 aperture, sure, you're losing a stop on the low light end, but the optical image stabilization helps make up for some of that as far as your shutter speed goes. So, um, you know, some of that is mitigated. The sharpness on this lens is superb. The size, it's somewhere, you know, obviously in between these two, it's very carryable in terms of uh, backpacking or just holding for a long day of shooting. So for me, um, you know, I'm very happy with the choice I made in buying this lens. I see no reason for me to upgrade to, to the G Master. Now the Tamron, which I bought just recently for my wife, so far I'm loving this lens. A 28 to 75 zoom range, it's slightly different than the 2470 obviously. I find the 28 to be plenty wide enough and at 75 millimeters you get that extra five millimeters to draw in for a portrait and I think it's a nice effect. So personally I think this is a great focal range on this zoom. As you can see from the images, the sharpness is very, very good. You certainly don't need, in my opinion, you don't need any more sharpness out of a lens like this. Um, you know, the portraiture that you can get out of this lens, you're getting really fine details right down to the skin pores. So while the sharpness may not quite be on par with the GM or even with the, the 24 to 105, it's still excellent. And like I said, it's probably about as good as anybody is gonna need unless you're doing some sort of specialized photography. Um, really the only downside to this lens is the focusing is a bit slower. You do get a slight amount of hunting and low light that you don't get, particularly don't get with the GM lens. Um, and um, one small little nitpick is that the, the indicator where you're supposed to mount the lens, the little line, it's not a dot, it's not a raised dot like you get on most other lenses. So you don't get that tactile feedback when you're changing lenses, when you're putting the lens on to be able to line it up for mounting. And I find that to be a little bit of a hassle, particularly if it's you know night or something like that, or you're looking at other things. It is nice to have that little dot. But otherwise, good build quality, feels solid. The zoom works just you know fine, it's very smooth. Uh, the orientation of zoom and focus, like I mentioned, it's, it's different than the Sony lenses, so it does take a little bit of uh, adjustment if you're uh, jumping back and forth between them. But otherwise, this is a great buy, and I think a really, really nice addition to the choices that we can make as Sony shooters as to what to mount in our camera. So there you go, I hope this video helps. I hope that uh, you can now make an informed decision in whichever lens you choose. I'm glad that uh, this video could help you. Thanks for liking and watching, have a nice day.